Hi everybody, hope you are making the most out of today. So let's go ahead and get started with another CUDA software worksheet tutorial. This is the distance formula. I'm Mr. West, let's get going. So number one here, we're asked to find the distance between a pair of points. Okay, round your answer, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so uh, the distance formula. This is something that everyone wants to memorize for some reason. Um, and I'll go ahead and write out what the formula is. But I'm gonna show you where it comes from briefly. If you want a little bit uh, more about uh, where it comes from and some examples leading up to it, there's another video I have that explains the distance formula uh, in more detail, so go ahead and watch that. So this is essentially what the distance formula is. It's just uh, subtracting the x's, subtracting the y's, and squaring it. Make sure you keep the same order here. The, if you put the two out in front, uh, you have to keep the two in front for the y and the x. And what do I mean by that? You can't have like x2 minus x1, and then over here, y1 minus y2. It's okay if you write y1 minus y2, you just also have to write x1 minus x2, because it doesn't really matter which one you subtract as long as you're consistent. Consistency is the key, not only in math, but in life. Now, real quick, the distance formula, where does it come from? Well, it comes from uh, the Pythagorean theorem. So if we have a triangle here, and if you uh, draw a triangle, and let's we'll make this blue, okay? See how this is a right triangle? And the reason why this is more effective is because we can count vertical and horizontal distances on the coordinate plane, but we can't do diagonal distances. So that's where the Pythagorean theorem comes in handy because when you have horizontal and diagonal, we know this is 90 degrees. Now we have a right triangle and we know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And that's the distance we're interested in, uh, we are interested in, this distance right here. So if we, can f if we know A and B, which we do on a coordinate plane, because we can just count up and down, uh, left and right, but we can't count diagonally. Like we don't know, we know how this is one, two units between these two points, but we don't know something like on a diagonal, okay? We, you can't count that. So how, how does uh, the distance formula factor into all this? Well, all we need to do is to get C by itself. We're not interested in C squared. We're just interested in the distance C. We take the square root of both sides, okay? And then we get C by itself. That's the same thing as distance. C equals that distance. And we have the square root of A squared plus B squared. We have C by itself. And that's the distance formula. The only difference is instead of writing A, this is, why is that so big? Instead of writing uh, A, we're writing X squared minus uh, well, actually, instead of writing B, we're writing X squared minus X1. And then instead of writing this guy, we're writing Y squared minus Y1, because that will tell you on the coordinate plane, if you subtract those two points, it will tell you the distance of those two legs of the triangle. So that's essentially where it comes from. I just don't want you guys to be like, oh, what's the, what's the formula? And that's what I hear all the time. Try to understand what it means. It will make a little bit more sense to you, and you'll be a lot better at math if you try to understand instead of just trying to memorize. Memorizing doesn't really do you any good. I mean, there's certain things you should memorize. Like, I, I would recommend memorizing your name. That's that's pretty useful. But other things, I wouldn't re recommend just memorizing. Understanding will help you to understand it and recall it at any given moment, which will appear as memorization. Okay, now that we got that sorted of why we use this blah, 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 blah formula, okay, what we're gonna do is we are going to label the points. So I guess I'll use, uh, I don't know, purple's been my go-to lately, but I'll go dark purple. How about that? Negative five comma, uh, what is that, point five? And then we have, what's this guy? We have this guy is uh, one comma negative two. So once we get that done, uh, I feel like I've done this video before. Let me check this out. Have I done this video? I have done this video. This is, oh, that's, mid, that's midpoint. I've done the midpoint video. I haven't done this one yet. <laughs> <laughs> For a second, I was like, I just had a, uh, uh, a revelation that I may have done this video. But no, I have not done distance yet. I've done midpoint, but not distance. Okay. So now that we have these points labeled, that's our first step. So number one, we want to label the points. Okay. So we label the points. This is very similar to, to if you guys have seen the midpoint video, it's very similar. So we're going to label X1, Y1, 
x2, y2. And this is what I mean. You don't really, it doesn't really matter which one you call x1 and y1, or x2, y2. It just matters that you're consistent. Keep the x, add the ones together and the twos together. So number one, we're gonna label the points. Number two, you're gonna plug in to the formula. So plug into formula. Now, on a coordinate plane like this, I just, I like doing the other method. I like just going, okay, I'm gonna count this. I'm gonna count, when I use red, red, and I'm gonna see what the distance is using Pythagorean theorem. I like to do that on a coordinate plane. Honestly, I think it's faster um, because then I just go, okay, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is seven. This guy is one, two, three, four, five, six. This guy is six. I'm gonna do seven squared plus six squared. Take the square to that. Boom, I'm done, okay? That's what I like to do personally. Um, but if you're like, oh, I, I, that's too much. I just need the distance formula, okay? All right, that, that's what I'm about to do. So number two, plug into formula, okay? So we're gonna plug into the formula right now. All right, so we have distance equals square root of, okay, so our x2 uh, is one, and we're gonna subtract our x1. Put it in parentheses anytime you have a negative, very important, squared, uh, plus, Okay, what are we plussing? We're doing negative two, because we gotta keep the y twos and x twos out in front. If we did that once, we gotta do it twice. Minus y y one is five. I don't need a parenthesis because it's uh, positive. Squared, okay. Proceed, one minus a negative five is one plus five, so that's six squared. What do you know, six, six. Is that a coincidence? Is that a coincidence? No, it's not plus negative two minus five, that's uh, negative seven. Seven, where'd that seven come from? Is that a, it's not a coincidence. Spoiler alert, okay, so we square that. Okay, square root, there we go. Now we have a square root of 36 plus 49. Hmm, hmm, what's this gonna be? Well, if you want, go ahead and use a calculator because this is not gonna be a perfect square. Now, I get square root of 85. This is where it depends. You gotta adjust to your math teacher here. Um, some math teachers are gonna be like, oh, you uh, just uh, just find the decimal form, which uh, mo I don't know. I've never really heard of just going decimal form here, but 9.22 would be the decimal form. Most uh, of your like honors geometry teachers are probably gonna tell you to rationalize this. What does that mean? That means we're gonna look for perfect squares and we're gonna simplify this and leave it in radical form. Now, I don't know if 85 has any perfect squares that go into it, no. Okay, so technically you'd be okay leaving it at square root of 85 because there is no perfect squares in 85. The factors are five and 17, those are both prime. So we leave it at square root of 85. Some of your teachers might ask for decimal form. I don't know who those people are, but just saying. Okay, so we're done with this guy. Find the distance between number one, done. Number four, I'm gonna jump to number four real quick, just because if you want, go ahead and do the distance formula, blah, 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 all that stuff. But this one, look, we can just count. One, two, three, four, five, six. Why can I count? Well, because it's it's along the vertical uh, along a vertical coordinate, you know. So we can just count those units. And if you don't believe me that this is six units, a distance of six units. All right, let's let's plug it into the formula. You you, you, you doubters. Negative four two. Negative four. Negative four. Watch this. We're gonna do. We're gonna label the points x one x uh, y one. Sorry, I don't know. That's a bad habit. X one x two. Do not do that. Uh, x2, my goodness, y2. All right, so square root of uh, x2 minus x1, that's negative four, minus a negative four, okay, squared, plus, extend this, we have negative four minus two. Hmm, I hope you guys see what's gonna happen already, squared. All right, uh, let's go ahead and simplify. That equals our distance. Distance equals, we're gonna have negative four minus negative four, negative four plus four, that's zero squared. Then we have plus uh, negative six squared. Make sure you always do inside the parentheses before squaring. We get 36. Once we square six, negative six squared is positive 36. Oops, sorry, not sure why that popped up. That's square root. We're gonna ignore the negative square roots. 
or the net, yeah, the negative roots because we're talking about distances. And what do you know? I get six. So that's why we can just, anytime it's vertical or horizontal, we can just count. We don't need to use the distance formula. Okay. Let's just do one more for good measure. Let's go down here and use, do one of these ones. So we're just gonna label x1, y1, x2, y2. Okay. Square root distance. So we're gonna do our x2 minus our x1. Okay. So there's negative one minus eight. Uh, squared plus y2 3 minus y1 5 squared okay we get uh, was that 9 squared plus was that negative 2 negative 2 squared so we get 81 plus 4 the square root of that we get what well, do you know square root of 85 we already know we can't simplify it but if you want to put it in decimal form you go and put 9.22 or whatever. But I'm not gonna, I'm not even dignify that with a response. So that's how you do that. Um, if you want to know how to simplify radicals, there's other videos. I'm pretty sure I I will make or have made, depending on when you when you watch this video, uh, of how to simplify radicals. But for now, that's all you need for the distance formula. Hope you found this helpful. Thank you so much for watching.